The Air 15 is easily one of the most upgraded and tinkered on firearms on the market. So one of the things that you may want to upgrade is the muzzle device, whether you're going with a new flash hider or a muzzle brake. So today we're going to show you how to remove your muzzle device and then properly install a new one. Let's check it out. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Midwest Gunworks. And today we have a very simple video that we hope is going to help you out. So what we're going to be doing is showing you how to remove a muzzle device, which a lot of times can be very hard because they're stuck or loctited or a number of different things. And then we're also going to show you how to install a new one. Well, some people may ask, why would I wanna upgrade my muzzle device? Well, there's a lot of aftermarket muzzle brakes and flash hiders that not only improve uh, the shooting experience, but you can also attach a suppressor to via the QD system. So there's really only a couple things that you absolutely need to do the job of changing your muzzle device. One being a new muzzle device. So whatever you may choose, whether it be a flash hider or a muzzle brake, you're going to need some type of wrench to get it off whether it be just a regular crescent wrench because the new device is able to be used with a regular crescent wrench. Maybe you have an AR-15 specific tool that has the option of taking off a muzzle device. And then one thing that you absolutely need to do the job is a vise. Muzzle devices are very tight and then you're going to be installing them pretty tight also. So you need a vise to be able to hold on to your barrel or rifle. So the first thing that we're going to show you is how to remove a muzzle device, which sometimes can be very difficult, whether they have blue Loctite, rock set, or they're just tight. So we're gonna show you some tips and tricks. All right, so I have my Wheeler Action Rod installed into the upper on this AR. We're going to be removing the A2 flash hider and installing a muzzle device. So this is one way that you can grab a hold of your rifle. This isn't the best way um, because there's so much that's hanging out of the vise that you're going to be pulling out here and that you can hold on to the upper and then crank on it, but there are some better ways. So a better way is to remove your handguard and then take your gas block loose and tighten the barrel into the vise. Um, again, this is where you need a vise because we're going to be cranking on this. Now I have removed the flash hider before, so I know that it's not tight. So this setup is going to work just fine for removing. So I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks how to remove a flash hider if it's tight. Now, if it is super tight and you know that there is Loctite, grab a torch. Um, you can use a lighter, but it'll probably take you forever to get it to heat. What a torch is going to do is um, melt or you know, liquefy that Loctite, kind of burn it so that it loses its adhesion. So what you'll do is take your torch. And you wanna work your way around the device, around the barrel, not sitting in one location. So if your threads do have Loctite on them and you're going and you don't know when to stop, well, for one, you don't wanna get it cherry red, obviously, but when that Loctite actually burns, it's going to smoke. So stop and keep checking it. And when you see smoke coming out, that's when the Loctite has burned and you can try to remove. As Soon as it does that, grab a hold of that wrench and loosen it. Another way that you may need to go about this is if there's rock set on your device. If there's rock set on the barrel and your muzzle device, you can use heat, but sometimes that's not the best way. The best way is going to be to get a cup of almost boiling hot water and submerge the muzzle device and the end of the barrel in that and let it soak for a little while. After it soaks, as soon as you get it out, try to break it free. And then another trick for getting a stuck muzzle device is just continuously oil it. 
Um, sometimes there's rust buildup or different things that if you have some penetrating oil and really even regular oil, you can add that, it'll soak down into the threads and then you can try to remove it after that, maybe add a little bit of heat and uh, draw that oil down into the threads to try to get rid of that rust or buildup that you may have. All right, so now I have my Wheeler AR-15 wrench and I can remove my device. Very simple, very self-explanatory. I'm going to put it on my flat. Again, we have a lot hanging out, so I'm going to grab a hold. Be careful, make sure it's not hot. You don't wanna burn your hand, um, but I'm going to grab a hold of the upper. As I do that, lefty loosey, righty tighty, of course, and it comes loose. This again is where you need to be careful that your muzzle device may be hot. I'm going to remove this and the crush washer which we are going to go over. All right, so now I have just a barrel installed in my vise that we're going to be putting these mobile devices on. Again, the way that I would do the install is to take my gas block loose, let it hang out up here, let the tube just go through the vise, and then I would tighten down to the barrel. So there's two different types of muzzle devices generally, and there's two different types of shims. So the first muzzle device, whether we're talking brake or flash hider, is a timed muzzle device. What that means is that the muzzle device can only go one way. You want the ports to the side and you want the flats up and down. You don't want the ports you know, up and down because then it's you know, kind of defeating the purpose of the muzzle device. Then you will have a untimed, non-timed device like this flash hider here. It doesn't matter how it goes on. It doesn't have to be timed, so you don't have to worry about trying to do that. Then you're going to have two different types of shims. You're going to have the crush washer, which you will see on a lot of A2 style flash hiders, and then you're going to have shims. Now, this AAC muzzle device does come with a shim set because it does have to be timed. So you can look to see the thickness that is provided so that you can get it timed correctly. So what a crush washer does is it crushes. You put this on the barrel, you put your flash hider on, and you crush the washer until you get it aligned. Then with shims, you are using these because you want to tighten it, but you don't want it super tight and you want your muzzle device timed correctly. Now each muzzle device is a little bit different on torque setting. Flash hider, you don't have to torque because you're using crush washer. Technically, you do have to torque these muzzle devices that are timed or untimed to a specific setting. AAC recommends 20 to 30 on these specific devices, so check with the manufacturer. So when installing these muzzle devices, some manufacturers will recommend rock set. So on these AAC devices, they actually include a small amount of rock set, and that's going to keep these from coming um, unthreaded. So with this specific device, we would add our little bit of rock set, we're going to thread this on. Does not need to be timed, so we're going directly to the barrel. Take just a regular crescent wrench, and then we can just tighten it. Now, if you want to go specific and use torque settings, great, that's awesome. You can use a torque setting, but I'm just showing you the very rudimentary way that you can do at home with some simple tools. All right, so an untimed Muzzle device um, is that simple. Just put a little bit of rock set, thread on. You don't need a crush washer, you don't need a shim, nothing like that. You can use um, a torque wrench, so you can set that to the recommended 20 to 30, or you can just give it a little, uh. It's not um, very scientific, it's just a muzzle device, to be completely honest. All right, so now let's take a look at a timed muzzle device. So what I'm going to do first is just see where this device is lining up without any shims. So I'm going to just thread this on by hand. All right, so it's, of course, if you're, okay, now my barrel is straight up and down. Make sure that's tight. So this muzzle device is almost right where it needs to be. So I know that I'm not able to get it tight enough 
without any type of shims. So I need to shim it out a little bit. So I will remove this and I'm gonna start with the thinnest shim, which in this kit is eight thousandths. Um, it's very small. So we'll see if that's enough. If not, then we can go up. Okay, now I would have to tighten it a ton. So it's just past. It's, it's not just past where it was, but it is just past where I want it. So I don't necessarily like that a lot. This is where you can test. So let's just go through and see what I like. All right, so I like that one. That is the red 15 thousandths. So now the way that it's sitting, I only have to tighten it a decent amount um, and I know I'll be able to get it to around that 20 to 30 foot pounds that is recommended. Again, if you have a torque wrench, great. If you don't, honestly, it's just a muzzle device. You don't wanna sit there and bear down on it, but you want it tight. You don't want it to back off and that's where the rock set can help. So now I would remove this, add a little bit of rock set, and then re-tighten. So now what I can do is take my wrench, it's three quarter inch flat on this device. So one thing you can do is add a little bit of electrical tape to either your wrench or the device if you don't wanna mar it up. This is where a good vise with jaws is important because you don't want it to twist. All right, so then you can eyeball it, make sure it's all lined up, and then you're good to go. So again, if you're installing a timed muzzle device, use the shims installed or purchase some shims so that you can get it to where it, you don't have to bear down and get it so tight to line it up, but it's not to where it's barely tight because it's already lined up. With an A2 flash hider, um, you can get away with a crush washer, with an untimed muzzle brake or flash hider like we talked about earlier, you don't have to worry about timing it, so you can go directly to the barrel. All right, that's it. There's some tips and tricks on how to remove and install a new muzzle device. I hope this helped you out. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those below. I will also leave a link in the description going to our website where we have a ton of different muzzle devices, tools, and a little bit of everything that you may need for your firearm. So as always, make sure you hit the subscribe button and check us out at MidwestGunWorks.com.